Jennifer Sanassi, you're watching News 24 Live. Well, Dorothy Black is joining me in studio, and today we're going to be talking about threesomes, Dorothy. Hey, threesomes. Yay. Threesomes, foursomes, fivesomes, <laughs> minisomes. Yeah, threesomes. Well, are threesomes good or bad? Um, threesomes are, whether they're good or bad, depends on why you're going ahead having them. And people have them for many different reasons. I suppose um, there's a big fantasy of having more than one partner at the same, at the same time. Uh, people enjoy threesomes for the fact that it gives them room to explore other partners while they're still in the safety of their, their relationship. And then it also gives them room to explore their sexuality. So if you're having like a male, male, female, or female, female, male, if you're a guy, you, be, you might be able to explore your bisexuality. If you're a woman, you might be able to explore your bisexuality within a safe space. Well, that all sounds fine and dandy, but can people in a relationship, a committed relationship, can they actually have a threesome or does it eventually lead to the deterioration of that relationship? Oh, God, no. Listen, it can make, it can make relationships better or it can make them worse, depending on how you went into it. Mm -hmm. So I think if you go into, if you broach the question of having a threesome with your partner, um, you, there has to be a lot of conversation about why you want to do this. Because it can be like tricky subjects for, for some people. It kind of gets like, there's trust issues and then self-esteem issues. And so I think if you manage to broach that topic mm -hmm. with your partner in a healthy, open, communicative, and honest way, it can really strengthen your relationship because you go into it as a team, mm -hmm. you know? But if you are going to go into it like not talking, not being honest, and not keeping, not making constant check-ins about why you're doing it, how are you feeling in the moment, and then having sort of like after conversations about it, it can, I think it could do damage to the relationship. So whether it's good or bad depends on how you and your partner manage that entire fantasy mm -hmm. and move it into reality. Well, what are some of the healthy reasons to want a threesome? Well, you know, it goes back to the fact that people can explore their sexuality, yeah. they can explore having more partners at the same time, and they can also explore, um, explore a fantasy, because it is a big fantasy. Mm -hmm. And they can do that in the safety of a relationship, assuming that you and your partner are kind of doing the good conversations yeah. and the check-ins with each other. What are the unhealthy reasons? I think the unhealthy reasons are sort of when people take a fantasy and they think it's going to be better than reality. And actually, a lot of the times we have a fantasy and when we move that into reality, there are a whole lot of like things that we haven't considered before. What it's like being with someone while you watch your partner, jealousies that come up, the, just the, the technicalities. Have you been for STD checks? How do you manage like um, how do you manage condom usage? What happens with the person when you're finished? Where do you find the person? How do you go how, how do you go about instigating that? Mm -hmm. So the unhealthy things is you have this fantasy and then you try and like block it into a particular thing, and when the reality of it comes in, you don't know how to deal with that properly. And so I think also other reasons people want to push threesomes on their partners is maybe a kind of manipulation. They might feel like they want to prove that they're not good enough or they want to prove that they want something else. Um, there are loads of other reasons that, that could prove harmful to a relationship. Okay, now you just asked a whole bunch of questions that I want the answers to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you ask your partner to have a threesome or you bridge the topic and your partner wants absolutely nothing to do with it, oh, then, yeah, what? Yeah. then what? Then uh, what? You know, it depends on the kind of relationship that you're in. Um, I would like to say that if you're in that kind of relationship where there's just going to be a big no to suggestions, um, that feels like something that's going to be quite stuck because then you won't be able to explore your sexuality with someone. Mm -hmm. So it would, I think it would raise some questions as to why you're in the relationship and what you're comfortable saying goodbye to and what you're comfortable playing with. Um, but I would... I don't think I'd leave the conversation right there. If my partner said, no, I'm not interested, I would start asking why you're not interested. Are there ways of going around that? Because here's the other thing with threesomes. People have this big porno idea of like, they have a threesome, and then it's gonna be this crazy gangbang, where, <laughs> where in fact, you know, when you start a threesome, or when you start a foursome or a fivesome, whatever the case is, it can be, simple, it can be as simple as simply getting naked with someone and watching two people kiss, or, having some like stroking or heavy petting. There doesn't have to be penetration. There doesn't have to be oral sex. Um, and so I think when you go into the conversation, it can be as simple as how would you feel about someone else being with us while we cuddle or while we kiss? Um, and then you can kind of move it forward. So you ask your partner, your partner says no, I don't feel like that's the end of the conversation. I think what should happen is you should both try and find ways of managing a fantasy into reality that'll satisfy you both without hurting the relationship and without you know, pushing each other apart.